Hi guys, my name is Amina K. Thornton and you're listening to a One Up podcast. You can get the links to all the broadcasts by going to anchor.fm slash one up and you spell out the one up. So that's anchor.fm slash one up. This is also on amina.media. That's amina.media where you can see all the YouTube videos uh, from the live uh, session today. This session is called uh, Message of Hope uh, from Struggle to Success. And today we have uh, Joni. And Joni, can you say your last name for me? I don't want to mess it up. Sure. It's D. Campley. Okay, I did have it right, De Campley. That's yes. what exactly what I was going to say. Um, so uh, Joni, um, Joni's here, and she's going to be talking uh, a lot about her kids today. Um, that she's had a lot of uh, things that she had to help uh, with her kids with um, substance abuse, basically, in general. And uh, so she's going to focus a lot of her story around that. And then we're going to also um, find out, you know, how she helped um, – by running a business to help them, you know, get past that. And then what, what did that entail? So we're, we're talking a uh, business and, you know, uh, how to, um, be there for kids that, that are in a situation where they're in, a, you know, a, um, substance abuse when they, they're over indulging in those mm -hmm. things. All right. I'm going to go ahead and let, uh, Joni, um, let us know how this all starts. Okay, well, it all started, I was laid off from a corporate job, and I live in a small beach town in Delaware, so there's a lot of retail, so I found a part-time job working in a boutique, and it was one hot summer night, and I had that awful boob sweat, and I turned to my coworker, I said, oh my gosh, I'm so mortified in this moment, there should be an all-natural breast deodorant, and I'm going to create it and call it Boobalicious. Just, just, I just, I just put that out there in the universe. So yeah. I started interviewing all the women that uh, came into the boutique if they would wear an all natural breast deodorant because there was nothing on the market at the time. And they all said, yes, like 98% said, oh my gosh, I would love to have that. So my husband said, Joni, stop talking about it and just mm. do it. So being laid off <clears throat> and raising a family, you know, financially, it was kind of difficult to even start a business. So I was telling my stepmother about it, and she um, sent me a beautiful card in the mail and said, if you never try, you'll never know, with yes. a $75 check. So with that $75 check, I went on the computer. Google was my best friend. I was in my late 40s, knew nothing about business or entrepreneurship, and I Googled how to make homemade deodorant, and I read every ingredient, what it does to your body, and I picked the ones that I thought I would like for my sensitive uh, body yeah. parts yeah, like yeah. in the area. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely sensitive. So I, I did the research, and I bought the ingredients, the containers, and Boobalicious was born. And so I For went $75, to this, you got all the $75. ingredients? And, yes, and a container. Wow. Wow. That's a pretty impressive. So yeah, I did. And of course I bought a little bit just to test yeah. it out. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I think I bought like maybe 24 containers and the ingredients. And I mean, I did a lot of research because I didn't know what I was doing. Well, you didn't want to mess up either. You only had $75. Exactly. Start. <laughs> yeah. And the first batch, uh, I was going to do colors, different colors, because I have different scents for the Boobalicious deodorant. And I did one batch, and I did not like the color. I wanted to go with the natural ingredients, like, you know, with no color in the deodorant. So the second batch was a winner. Like, I yeah, tried yeah. it two times, which was amazing, because I didn't have to keep on trying this formula. And, and I just put it all together, and I went to this farmer's market with a, ba a pink basket with all my Boobalicious in it. Yeah. And there was a, a gentleman there by the name of Charlie. And I always talk about Charlie. And he goes, what's that in your basket? I said, it's boovalicious. He goes, what's that? I said, it's all natural breast deodorant. And he went, I need that. And he literally said, wow. my voice sweats like a pig. And we started cracking up. So he bought two of them. The next day, he called me up and said, Joni, my wife went to the gym. She did not. She was, her bra was dry. He goes, this stuff really works. So I kind of like that was like a Yahoo moment. Like this is really going to work. Yeah. So I saw someone told me about Etsy 
And they said, did you ever think about putting your product on that seat? Yeah. And I'm like, and no. let me, let me so jump in here real fast too, because, um, the reason why, uh, Joni is, uh, you know, telling us about her business and stuff is cause it really helped, um, her children. Um, cause you know, the formation of this business, am I correct on this? Um, you know, paid for their recovery. It um, did. And that's for abuse. Okay. I just wanted to put it, put it in here right now. So um, people no, know where this is leading up to. This, this, okay. this is leading up to helping my children because this is the whole purpose. And yep. this is the whole purpose. This is how it all got started. And this is how everything kind of unraveled and you yep. struggle with life because life happens to you and you, you know, you never know what, what's going to happen or when and it's you were, happen. so you were 41 when you started this. I was 47. Oh, you were 47. I was 47. I knew no idea what I was doing. Love that. So, Love that. Yeah. So, and there's a backstory to that because of all the, um, I just keep going and I'm persistent and, I, and I'm determined to do things. So okay, well, we can cover that after you get yeah. done telling us what, ha what happened. So this is at a farmer's market, right? At a farmer's market. Okay. It was selling right away. Yeah. Um, then I put it on Etsy and I started getting recognized by Lord Beauty online, uh, the, uh, the Cosmo magazine online. Uh, I went international. There, were, there was a big article about uh, boob deodorant and my deodorant was included in that. There was two or three. And it, it basically was a negative article. How stupid is breast Aww. deodorant? That's okay. It was that yeah. negative article. Always good something happens out of bad. Because that negative article... I went international in the, in the UK because of that article. Wow. So I started shipping to the UK, Ireland, Italy. I mean, yes. I mean, obviously. <laughs> yeah. so of course, I was upset with that article. We have to remember sometimes bad things are a positive things because it, it's going to benefit you in the long run. So this is where everything stopped. I started getting all this recognition. I think, that, you know, Boobalicious, the brand was growing. And in the meantime, my daughter um, has. Um, she has a mental illness and an addiction oh. and and this is where everything kind of unraveled now she was diagnosed with her mental illness when she was 13 and mm -hmm. and it's a roller coaster ride and is it a certain struggle. term is there a certain like um she's bipolar bipolar okay she's bipolar she was diagnosed when she was 13. could you explain that a little bit because just for anybody that doesn't know what oh, bipolar yes. is. okay well when she was 13 she was having a lot of mood swings and 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 I, I just want to keep a little bit private for her. That's fine. You know, yes, but I don't know how, mm -hmm. But you know, I just noticed her declining in her um, just her schoolwork, um, having mood swings. I mean, just a totally different personality from what I, you know, her behavior was so different. And just the intuition, mother's intuition, mm -hmm. that something was not right. And then, of course, the school was calling me. Something was not right. So she was diagnosed with bipolar. I was devastated. I was crying. And I actually went to therapy for it, to, to learn how to be a better parent to a child okay. that has mental yeah. health. Exactly. And that's lovely, yeah. I did, because I was, and I read like three books on it, because that's my child, and I want to do everything possible to make this work for us and the whole family, because it affects the whole family, so yeah. it's not you, Definitely. and you know, having that dynamic thrown into your family life, that life, has yeah. completely changed, so I went to a therapist, and um, she said, you're, you're acting like this is the end of the world, <laughs> like, you know, she was, it's like a child having diabetic, they have to take their medicine. And you know, you're it's scary it's because you're like, oh my god, because I'm so used to living this way. You know, how do I deal? How how do I plug this in and deal with that and make sure I'm there for her and you know, giving her it's, what she needs? Yeah. So, yeah, I totally it, understand. It, it, it's definitely a roller coaster ride, and and anyone with a you know bipolar child or any kind of substance abuse, it, it, the struggle is real, and it's, it's you just go through the roller coaster ride. And you just, you just pray and you just be there for your children. And one thing I always say to parents, you know, it takes a lot of love, a lot of patience. And I know with my children, even in their bad times, I always told them how proud I was of them. Always. That's because what, yeah. I it, and it does take that. It does. It really does. You have to put in the positivity every single day. And they're children. They're children. They're children. So, well, I'll, I'll give you one example. I always put humor into the, you know, not that it, it's okay for this, but I always had a sense of humor and I still do. And I think that's what gets me through. Um, I know my son had a detention at school and my daughter had probation. So we're at 
the dinner table and I and I just said cheers I am so proud of you kids you have detention more you have probation mm -hmm. I, I and they of course they started laughing but you yeah. they knew yeah. I was upset but it kind of yeah. took you know I always the edge I, off the edge off and you know it's not that they didn't get punished or you know they had to stay in Good. for a week you know they, they got punished but I also let them know that I'm also you know I'm a mom and I have to you know you know raise you with re respect and you have to you know face the consequences but I'm also here for you and you can count on me and you can trust me that's good so we always had we always had that trust factor they could tell me anything and I always said as long as you don't lie you won't get in as much trouble <laughs> yeah and as much as much <laughs> you'll get in trouble but yeah. not as much so <laughs> They yeah. always came clean with me because they sure. knew they wouldn't, punishment wouldn't be as bad. But yeah. anyway, so, you know, Christine, um, you know, with the bipolar, you know, like I said, the struggle, it, it's real. So when I was doing the boobalicious, this is when her struggle became a little bit, you know, with the addiction plus the bipolar. The, the she was 13? Of, she was 13 at the time? Oh, no, this is down the road. When she was oh, 13... Okay. The, the road was long and okay. getting back to the therapist, she said it's going to be like a roller coaster ride and, and it's, it's going to be a struggle until she's at least 24. She even said that age 24 and to the day, I think Christy was 23, 24 when she decided, okay, this is uh, time for me to uh, work on myself. Okay. So, so anyway, with that, um, the therapist was saying, you know, you have to, uh, as a parent, you have to give them choices and an example she said when you know you want their room clean you know how i don't know as a parent get your room done now get yeah. it done right now <laughs> <I'm just laughs> my kids. It's, come on we gotta get the thing done <laughs> exactly. well they 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 to a certain degree what she told me they like control too and when you're yelling yeah. at them this must be done right now it kind of gives them that sense like really like i'm not going to do it right now so what i would do when she taught yeah, me I okay I, I want your room clean. Today is Monday by Thursday. If it's not clean, yeah. you don't go out this weekend. So that's how I started, like, you know, with the, both my children at the time. I said, if the room's not clean by Thursday, then you don't go out. Yeah. So guess what? That yeah. room was yeah. clean Thursday because they did it when their time. Yeah. So that was one great lesson that therapist taught me about, you know, just dealing with different things with my kids. Yeah. And, Tom, there, you know, there, this is a timeline, you know, just like any deadline, even in business, you have a deadline. If you don't meet the deadline, guess what? You're going to be working the weekend, you know, <laughs> so, you know exactly. whatever. Exactly. You're going you're to make it up in some way or another. So, yeah. yeah. So that therapist was great. I loved her. And I went there just to be a better parent, how to handle, you know, the whole family dynamics of, you know, going through with her mental health yeah so now going back to etsy i started selling etsy you know with the boobalicious and that's when you know my daughter came to me and said you know i think i'm ready for help and financially i didn't know how i was going to do it but i was having all these sales on etsy so everything i made on etsy paid for her sober living wow and and she she's five years sober and she's wow, doing that's great. good that's, that's yeah really she's great. doing amazing she's doing great so once we got you know my daughter okay she's taken care of I, I was just like i was winging it with etsy i was making as many sales as i could and i wasn't thinking about pushing were you like so you, you were still like the only one doing everything like making the deodorant packaging it you know shipping it out and working full time working full time oh you're working full time care. too okay yeah I, I was doing it all like i was laid off i i, I found a full-time job i was doing boobalicious on the weekends at night um yeah, anytime I mean, you could. It's, it's like a blur because i was doing so much i didn't know what day it was like and and then yeah. taking care of my children and then with with my daughter you know she went away and we found a great place in delray florida called miracles do happen who i'm working with her name is millie tennessee she owns it what's, what's the name <clears throat> miracles do happen miracles do happen and what was the name of the provider millie tennessee millie? tennessee okay yes so we were, we were we became best friends millie and i and, oh, that's and we're coming up with a little program. I don't have um, a nonprofit yet, mm -hmm. but I'm using my own money. I'm putting my own money away to help a family 
that if they have it right now it's women's recovery and uh, you know I, I do want to do men recovery because I'll get to my son who he, you know yeah. he's an alcoholic so this is a, I want to get take baby steps and my my goal is to grow my brand so I can help as many families as I can because I and what, what will your organization be about what is the what is the I guess the purpose the overall purpose? Um, the purpose is for me is what I want to do for families is right now with miracles do happen. I, I've been giving Millie a little money and I want to pay for one month's rent for a family that can't afford it. And okay. So like way, help them out so they can get on their feet, get on their feet. And I wanted to pay three months and Millie's like, no one month because you have to hold them accountable, accountable. Because yeah. in their recovery. They need, you know, it, it, they have to take the baby steps, but at least the finance of that monthly rent will be off the parents or their loved one that financially can't do it. Like myself, if I didn't have Google issues, I don't know how I would aid for my children's recovery or help them in any way I could to get them through this. Yeah. So, so right now that's what I want to do. We just pay for one month of uh, sober living and Millie will uh, talk to someone, you know, she'll get all, she gets all the calls and she feels that this family is in need and they can't afford it. She'll call me, I'll pay for one month's rent and you know, their child or aunt or mother will be on the way to miracles to happen. And Millie helps them find jobs. She helps them get on their feet. She helps them be accountable and I just want to take the baby steps and, and just grow it from there. I mean, yeah. My, yeah. the future oh, is yeah. I yeah. see me helping a lot of families because that's my purpose. I'm so grateful for my children being with me that I want to pay it forward. It's like, yeah. I want to, I don't have to, I want to. So Joni, is um, the Boobalicious still on Etsy or do you have a, like a website that's named Boobalicious as well? Well, we're working on a website now. Mm -hmm. It's called lovebubalicious.com, L-U-V, boobalicious.com. I'm okay. still on Etsy, doing really well on Etsy. And I'm actually opening up a Boobalicious boutique online. I'm going to be doing a boutique online and selling the products and different things. So I'm really growing right now. And I'm coming out. I have more products that are out there. I have a product for men. I, I just created a new product called Lady Jane for your lady parts. So oh, I create, yeah, yeah I create um, all natural products for those embarrassing areas we don't like to talk about. Yeah, I love that. that and that's yeah. good because, yeah, there's not too many mainstream ones either that I can think of. I can't ever really think of any actually that are like at a uh, supermarket well, or something like that. When I started Boobalicious, and as, and you know, as an entrepreneur, the journey, it, it's, you know, a lot of people see like, oh my gosh, I, and, I, and I, I'm guilty of this. I see, oh my gosh, they're so successful. That happened overnight, but it doesn't happen yeah. overnight. It takes a lot of hard work, a lot of struggles. So, and, and, and I learned through this journey, not only, you know, taking care of my adult children with their addiction and working full time. And working full time, things, yeah. I learned how important it is to network and to invest in yourself because that's what that's what has helped me out for the last two years I have grown because of networking and having mentors and it, it just really helps you grow your business when you, yeah when definitely you so what type of mentors uh do you have currently or have you had is it like a business mentor or personal or what would you define your mentor well, as? When I, like, you know, I was new to business and I went on Instagram to put my Boobalicious page up and I saw this guy named Grant Cardone. And yeah, I, I follow Grant. Yeah. And I, I, like, read, I think I've read all his books by now. So, yeah, <laughs> I think so. Yeah. And I started following him and, and started really listening to him. And he, and he is the one who said, and this was free advice. He said, yeah. invest in yourself get a mentor. So I would listen to all his advice and I literally took that advice for free and I followed it. Like write your goals down, get a journal, write your goals down, write everything down, which I do. And it really truly helps. Yeah. Like you would think that it helps, but it, um, it really, he has taught me so much with him being on Instagram and just talking for free. But I, since then I've been to two 10 X conference. I joined two of his mentor groups I mean, and they're unbelievable. 
Yeah. And, and, I was just watching some of his yeah. videos on um, Cartoon You actually the other day. I was like, yeah, some things I know I've known because I've I've been an entrepreneur twenty years, but it's a good refresher too, and it's nice where you're not in your head so much. You're hearing it from somebody else, and it's a validation too. You know, uh, absolutely. Uh, and I have Cartoon You as well. Yeah. And, and, you know, I had a Forbes Riley. She was one of my mentors. Oh, yeah. I just, uh, I was just on a program with her. So, yeah. Forbes. Yes. Love her. <laughs> and she's, she's wonderful, too. And she's really good. She can really get inside your head. And, and she works miracles. Like, Forbes Riley, she works miracles. So, I, she was probably, she was my first network I went to, Forbes mm -hmm. Factor. Yeah. It was amazing. So, I started traveling, investing in myself. I actually went, um. There's a young motivational speaker, Andy Aldette. He's 24 now. Okay. And he said when he makes his first million, he was going to rent a yacht and have a yacht party. And it was called the Progression Conference. I went to that conference. Uh, so I went you went on the yacht. yacht. Cool. Very yacht. cool. And when was this? When, when was this, this was almost three years ago. Oh, not long ago. That's not long ago. Or maybe 2018. Maybe 2018. I okay. went and I... I actually met um, Teddy Mellencamp's husband huh. and Edwin, and I don't know if you know Teddy Mellencamp from no, The Housewives. Uh, oh, okay. John, okay. John Mellencamp's daughter. Okay. John yeah, Cooper. yeah. That's cool. So I, yeah. I was talking to her husband, talking about being malicious, and I gave him one. And I, I am a giver. I always give. And I just gave him one and said, hey, let Teddy try it. You know, thank you for He was so nice. Thank you for talking to me. Next thing I knew, and I wasn't expecting this. Yeah. Uh, she wrote an article on Bravo News about malicious. Oh, that's wonderful. That's really yeah, so, nice. It's just yeah. Like, you should it, you should never expect anything um, when you give something to the world. Not like, nothing. I mean, like you said, I even liked how you said you know Grant Cardone doesn't either. Like he does all this. If you don't want to purchase his books, if you don't want to go to ten x, there is so much he gives for free. You could just plug into all the free stuff, and you will like just if you pay attention and write stuff down, you will learn so much. And I do a lot of free stuff too um, through Amina through Amina dot media that goes over to the um, YouTube channel just because you know it is paying it forward too. And for the people that are in situations where maybe they can't go to a conference and get like that immersion feel, um, but still like learn at their pace. And I really truly believe in that because that's how I started off in entrepreneurship. I I was nineteen. I couldn't afford nothing. <laughs> I was lucky if I could afford groceries, you know, so, you know, books saved me, like books gave me my, my initial push. So. And, you know, I started late in my life. I'm 54 now. Mm -hmm. So I started when I was 47 and I want to give you a backtrack story to, you know, through this journey and, and setting goals and, and determined to make it because my purpose is my children and helping other families. So that keeps me going every day. I do this because I want to help others. I don't do this for me. And, and, you know, of course I want to be financially successful. Of course. But, I mean, but that's, but that's I, how people, that's how you can give back. I mean, you need the money I, to give yeah. back. I mean, it's just exactly. it's a resource. So you're not using it to go blow, you know, on like exotic trips and like, exactly. no, you know, you're, you're putting it all back into like giving back. And, uh, you know, I was a single mom for 10 years and I, I was, I, I, I party hard until I was 21. I mm -hmm. got married. My husband didn't stop. I did. I wanted to have healthy babies. I had two beautiful babies and I lost my house because he didn't stop. So I lost everything, my house, my car. And what got me through was I set, even in hindsight, it was getting me ready for this entrepreneur journey yeah, because in my sight I set goals I said I need to get a car I need to get a job and then I need to get an apartment moved in with my parents within a year I had my car I, I got a full-time job and then I moved into an apartment within a year so my next goal was I need to get a house for my children and child support was on and off on and off so I could not depend on it yeah. so I got a job yeah. I got a job at a big corporation with no college education I started out as a library clerk and I worked my way up to a project scheduler, a staff analyst, and I bought my house within four years. Wow. So, 
yeah. any so anything's possible and yeah. i really don't share that story because i don't think it's important but now as i'm doing this entrepreneur journey it is important because whatever you put your mind to you can do because i was a single mom i had three children now but i was a single mom with two children and and that yeah. was a struggle that, that is, a- that is. So I'm a sole parent uh, myself. Um, I, I would say for quite a while, <laughs> but, uh, but officially like over a year. Um, so yeah, it is, it is hard to balance um, everything, especially when you don't have that support. You don't have like outside help. You don't have like, you know, friends and family, like watching your kid or his kids or, you know, so it is, it's like trying to, do it's it's everything you got to do everything you got to you got to you know to provide for their needs you got to of course make sure all the bills are paid make sure that you have food in the house because they eat all the time um so it is a constant it, it was it was a struggle i remember just eating potatoes and noodles oh I, yeah I never bought meat, which was okay. I never complained about it because I was thankful that I had a roof over my head for my children. And then I taught myself how to bartend. So I got a bartending job. So not only did I work in the corporate job on the weekends, I would bartend and I saved all that money and that bought my house. So I wow. mean, you can do anything you put your mind to. I didn't know how to bartend. I taught myself, I was good at it and I made good money. And then I would go right home to my children. And of course, they, we would sit on the bed and they would throw the money in the air, you know. <laughs> that is cute. Yeah, that's cute. That's fun. That cute. But I had, I had a great time being a single mom. You know, the struggles are there. It, it's you, got the time, you have a lot of time to think about what do I want to do? What are my goals? Who am I? Uh, at least for me, I'm just like, you know, actually, this is kind of nice because I can really um, discover me and heal me and, you know, and also figure out what's my direction, you know, what, what goals, you know, like you said, you know, you wanted to get a house. So, you know, you're like, this is the next thing on the list. And, and it does it. give you that time to actually dig into you because you're not, you're not worrying about another, like pleasing anybody. You're not worried about like what happens if, you know, they want to go out. I want to stay home and work on my business. You know what I'm saying? I, I know exactly what you're saying. And then, you know, years later at 47, you know, I lost my job. I'm working in retail, you know, we're struggling and, and I came up with an idea and I went with it. And and that's another thing. You have an idea, just go with it. Because, you know, everyone laughed at me when I told them I'm going to make boob deodorant. Like they oh, thought that was, the, they thought that that was the craziest thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and here I am. I mean, I have over, oh, like 4,500 sales on Etsy and I have over 500 reviews and I'm a five-star product. So that just proves you can do anything you put your mind to. Yeah. Don't worry about other people, guys. I mean, cause they don't see the vision. They don't see the vision. They don't see where it's going, you know, so definitely stick, stick to what you're doing. And uh, exactly. So, so it's been a journey. And like I said, I wouldn't, I have a purpose now. And, I, you know, my purpose being a single mom was taking, having the best care for my children. And now my purpose is to help other families because I, I, I want to help other families because yeah. of what I, the struggles I went through. I don't want anyone to go through what I went through. Yeah, definitely. So you have two other children. Uh, so um, you said your son, uh, older or younger son? My son, um, he's a, a 18 months younger than my daughter. Okay. And so then he right alcohol? after, he, he's an alcoholic. So right okay. after my daughter had, you know, her, you know, her problems and, you know, it was my son's turn. So, you know, my son. Oh, so it seemed like you were, you were finally like at P, you know, you made, um, you know, uh, a loving environment, obviously, but you, you were at a place that you were just like, oh, finally we're on a good standpoint. We're, we're, we have a good foundation built for my daughter. And then he, that's when he decided that, or not really decided, just was involved with alcohol. Yeah, well, what happened was he, you know, my first husband, he moved to the mountains with my first husband five hours from oh, okay. that. And um, apparently that's when he started drinking heavy and he was in a DUI. So at that time, Boobalicious was doing well on Etsy. I had like over 200 orders. I got in my car, brought all my orders with me, drove to the mountains five and a half hours and he was in the hospital and I got him the best help possible. So I stayed there for almost two weeks, made my orders and got them out and, and got him the help that he needed. So, you know, of course you're there for your kids. So this is all the struggles I had trying to work, 
do my business. You're and like, I'm taking it all with me. Yeah. I just took it all with me. And, and I, you know, spent hours on the phone trying to get him in the best rehab and, you know, make sure he was okay. So yeah, it's a lot of work. And, you know, you don't think, yeah. you just do it because you, your energy is so high because the only thing you're thinking of is how to get your children better. Yeah. And, and then I also had a business and I, and I was dedicated to my customers to get this product out. Oh yeah. You're so, not going to close a shop or anything like, Hey, I need, cause you need to have those funds to help your son. So you had to exactly. bring that with so you. you have, and you have to be resourceful because when you're in the mountains, it's not like a Delaware. I live in Delaware and, and this was upstate in the mountains. The library was so little, I, I didn't even think the printer was going to work. So I, I sat in that library and printed out all my labels. So you have to be resourceful, <laughs> but I did it. I love how you say that. Yeah, because, yeah, because, um, you know, I, I used to have a cabin, so there is no internet in the mountains. <laughs> so, yeah, there is no, you, you can forget even finding like a really good grocery store. So, unless, yeah, so, yeah. That's so true. That's so true. Uh, you're going to have to find, you better bring some food with you. <laughs> so, so, and that's, that's exactly where I was at in the mountains. I stayed at yeah. his apartment and I made my boobalicious there. Oh, wow. I had everything with me. Oh, yeah, I made everything there. Visit him, you know, so I was going back and forth. Then came back home, and, you know, you start all over. And, you know, and he was sober for a year. He still struggles. He, you know, he gets sober, then he relapses, but that's normal. You have to be patient. You know, it, it's a struggle for anyone going through it. And he's doing great, and he's working, yeah. he works. And, I mean, both my children are doing great. And then I have a 16-year-old, you know, that you know i take care of now so you know it's always something going on it keeps you it keeps you moving <laughs> it keeps you young right <laughs> oh it's, it's short. It keeps you yeah. Young. <laughs> yeah it keeps you young so um you got the boobalicious that you're doing still on etsy you have the website that's called what was the address on that again it was love l-u-v love, love l-u-v love, 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 okay Lovebubalicious.com, and okay. that should be that should be coming up soon. Okay, yes. and then, but there's other products. You said there's the breast deodorant. There's um, some other feminine and masculine uh, products I, for private areas as well, and mm -hmm. uh, and you're doing the. Um, you're starting basically like it sounds like a um, a foundation or something um, with uh, what was Miracle the organization? Happen. Miracle Tennessee Miracle happen. Happen. And, and the foundation's not started yet, of course. You know, I will yeah. start that just, right it's now. It's just the very, very basic right now. Just very your, basic. Your I'm doing that on money. my own. It's all your money that you're putting into it. Yeah, that's amazing. And that's going to yeah. be paying. So your, your um, ambition with that is to pay the first month's rent for people that um, are dealing with substance abuse. Is that what it is? So they can get back on their feet. Correct. Okay. And for, you know, any kind of, you know, mental health, uh, alcohol, substance abuse, anything that they're going through and the parents cannot afford to send, you know, in a good sober living home. Mm -hmm. And Millie will, and, and another thing about Millie, I'm too easy. And Millie was my tough love. You know, they say give your children tough love with anything, any kind of addiction or any kind of behavior is issue. Mm -hmm. it, give them tough love. I never did that because I can't do that. I can't do that. Your personality. Love. Yeah, it's not. So Millie was my tough love. So Millie's like my daughter's second mom. She, she's the tough love side of it. So Good. it was a great combination that helped her. Well, they always say what it takes a village. Is that, is that what the saying is? I think it takes a yeah. village. You know? And it really does. Cause not, um, I think we often forget in society, especially where we're at in society that I didn't make this stuff that I'm using, you know, I'm not, I didn't like make roads and where I get my food sources. And, and I think we forget that because it, sometimes it comes too easy, you know, and we don't really have to struggle for it. And it's not until we have to struggle for it that we really appreciate it. And we're really grateful. And, and I love that you said that because growing up, like my kids, I always told them, be grateful for whatever you have. And, and that's how I raise them. Be grateful for the little things because the little things are really what matters. Yeah. Yeah. And it's often even like the free stuff is the most important, right? The, the time that we spend with each other, the conversations, you know, not the stuff at the end of the day, it's just stuff, you know, you, it comes and goes and yeah. And that's life and you just keep going. 
And so. the, the one, one great thing I did as a single mom, when the other two children were little, we would make dinner together every night because I worked full time, they were in school. So when we got home, we would make dinner together. And, and that was like our thing. And we would have dinner at the table together, which I still do. I, I think good. that's so important. It is. Having the family, family dinner at the table where you just talk about things. So I still do that to this day and I love it. Yeah, that is. That is good to have that that communication area, that time, so that you all know mm -hmm. that it's gonna that's gonna happen about that time and everything. My kids are actually homeschooled, so I see them twenty four seven. <laughs> so we we, get, we we switch it up a little. Sometimes it's lunch. So they're older now, a little bit older now too. So I just let them know, like tonight, uh, you guys are gonna help out with dinner tonight, you know, and then. We, we basically talk about it, like what's going on in each other's schedule. Um, of course, my two youngest don't really get too much of a choice. But I think my, old, my oldest and me talk about it a lot. She's 15. My other two are, let's see, uh, 12 and 10. So they don't get too much of a choice. But we do, we do uh, you know, like, okay, what do you guys want for dinner? All right, let, let's get the ingredients for that. You know, so, yeah, we, I, I love that. I love that. But, yeah, so... <clears throat> on Etsy, uh -huh. so you know, I, I will give twenty percent. I think it's twenty percent if you type in the word beautiful. Beautiful. Twenty okay. percent. Uh huh. And then uh, I also have fun scents. Like this is Hills of Honey. Yeah, I was going to ask you that. Did so because you started off with like a no scent, right? Or what was yeah. your first product scented? My first product, um, Boobalicious. I came up with these crazy scents, like uh, crazy coconuts, lickable okay. lemons. Uh, so you already, lemons. you already had scents, even when you started off. When I first started off, I had like seven different scents I came up with, and I gave oh. them. I gave okay. them. Here I'm thinking. Here I'm thinking. It's probably you know, this plain, not, no sense. No, I like that. I yeah. came up with different scents. That's why I wanted. So what's to the do. names? You you have some interesting names here. So go okay. go ahead and say what names we got here. Crazy coconuts, liveable uh -huh. lemons, perky peppermints, utterly unscented, uh, hills of honey. Right now, but in, uh, luscious lavenders is coming out. And then I have other scents that will be coming out too. Okay, yeah, I like that. I like that. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. Do you have like seasonal scents too? Yeah, uh, for uh, the fall, we put out plump pumpkins, which is the scent is so nice. Plump it's pumpkins. Plump pumpkins, yeah. So I try to think of cool. clever names. It's a fun product. And oh, yeah. you, know, you have fun with it. I have fun with it. We're going to get back. I also have um, the chub rub stick for big, beautiful woman. Uh, my aunt was using Boobalicious and she said, and she a, was a big, beautiful woman, said, I'm using Boobalicious for my nooks and crannies, like in my- Oh, nose. yeah. Every, every other, she, goes, every it, she goes, it takes out the rash and the odor. I said, oh my gosh, Aunt Jackie, I'm going to create the chub rub stick for big, beautiful woman like you. And so I created that. And then for the men, I have uh, all natural powder for men called Angry Balls. What is it? Oh, powder? Yeah. It's a powder? Yeah, it's an all natural powder for powder. men. Okay, and, yeah. And it's, it's called Angry Balls. Angry Balls. And, yeah. and, <laughs> this, is, this is kind of reminding me. Have you ever been to the Outer Banks uh, in North yeah, Carolina? I haven't. So yeah. we're not too far from it. So it's a, it's been a family tradition that we always go. Um, it, my parents own a, a house there for many years, um, vacation house. And um, so I think we've been going since probably 2004, I think. And um, so, well, they have these little shops there. And uh, one is called, um, if I get it right, it's been a while. I think one is called like Angry Nuts or something. And you know, they, sell, they sell like, you know, these, these, um, these products with, uh, you know, these, these, um, they're, they're very interesting names basically, but it, it's fun. It's just fun. It's fun. You know? it's fun. And then there's another one. I can't remember the name of that one. Oh, it's called Dirty Dicks. And <laughs> it's, it's a crab, a crab place. It's a restaurant actually. And they sell like, um, uh, thought-provoking t-shirts and stuff so you know it's definitely interesting and then I think it's because you know we don't have too many things out there that's just fun you know why can't we have fun, more fun like when we get to adult age we're just like all right what is it it's lavender so we got lavender set you know it's like, we, exactly we lose that like that playfulness you know and then when, you know, when people hear that I made breast theater and they're like, eh, like, you know, what's that? And then when I explain everything that I can help with, you know, half your boobs sweat, um, I'm not a doctor, so I can't claim that. But 
from my reviews, it, 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 it prevents the boob sweat and it takes out, you know, away the odor because of the scents I have. And it helps with rashes. And again, I'm not a doctor, but these are the reviews that yeah, my customers right. come back to me and that. say, mm -hmm. hey, I have a rash and Boobalicious took my rash away. Or, hey, you know, I went to the gym and my bra was dry. I had to go back to the bathroom three times. I couldn't believe how dry my bra was. So these oh, are the, yeah. the Especially customers. in gyms, I imagine it would be. Exactly. Yeah. So it makes and it's customers like that, you know, I always respond back to them, how great they make me feel because I can't, I, it was just an idea and I went with it. And now I'm, I solved the problem and I'm helping a lot of women out there. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Um, so you said, you know, your journey, you had a little bit of a journey too before um, all this because you, you became a single mom. Um, mm -hmm. How was that shift? Like, how did that, I guess, inspire you to do this journey that you, that you basically, you know, you, you're a very good self-starter. I could definitely tell that you, you know, you had, um, a marriage, right. And then you were a single parent and, but you know, you never gave up. You never like, you know, I'm done. I'm just gonna, you know, go with the flow wherever life takes me. You've always taken charge and you can really tell that mm -hmm. you can tell that, you know, you always had goals. You always had ambition. You always were not satisfied where you were. And you're like, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to make this happen. However, it's going to happen. Um, so I guess what I, I'm looking for is, you know, how that, I guess, affect you when, you know, you went through that dynamic and that, that period of your life. And was it even then when it started or was it before then that you really started taking charge of everything? You know, that's a good question. And, you know, I'm actually writing a book about my experience to help okay. others, that they can do anything they want, they put their mind to. Yeah. But my, my driven force through all this, and I've been married 20 years now happily, and I think it's, it's your mindset. And, and I used to worry what people thought of me, and I don't know why, I just did. And I, I changed my whole mindset, and I, I don't care what people think of me anymore like I used to. That, that was like a big, that wasted a lot of my energy thinking, I got to say the right thing. Uh, don't be stupid or don't, if they make fun of you. And, you know, I used to get upset if someone got mad at me. Like, I don't like anyone being mad at me. So, it, it, number one, it's your mindset. And for me, like having my children, I always wanted to be a mom. And having my children were, was the most the best gift I ever could have, the best thing I could ever have. Yeah. They are, they are my driven force. So it, I don't do it for me. I do it for them. And everything I have done, they have given me the strength and courage. And I look up to them. I said, I say the same exact thing. My kids have been my biggest cheerleaders. Like they, exactly. they, they supported me through so much and I'm so grateful for them, you know, and I love the fact that, you know, we're, we're really close. So you know, and we have this amazing relationship. So I'm very grateful for that. Yeah, absolutely. And and to this day, I mean, through the, my whole struggles, it's always been my children, you know, wanting to have a house for them, wanting to raise them, you know, in a society to be comfortable and not to, I didn't want to be on welfare. And I, I was on welfare for probably two months and it, it just wasn't me. I did not want to do it. I worked, I worked three jobs. I, yeah. I, I, I literally worked full time in two bartending jobs. So I was working like crazy to get this house and they have been my driven force and they still are through this day with their journey, with their addiction and mental illness. They're st this is my purpose and they, ha they drive me every day to be the best I can be. Yeah. I love that. I love that. So yeah, the, so because you had um, you had two kids, uh, you know, from the first marriage, is that right? So yeah, you've had that that um, that why the why. Uh, um, I'm trying to explain it, but basically through, uh, I'm, I'm telling everybody here, basically when you're going through something like um, self-development, we always have to find our why. We always have to find like, what's our reason? What's our driving force? And it could be something like um, we're forced into, like we lose everything. Um, of course, uh, this is why we're doing these messages of hope uh, for struggle to success. So, you know, even if you're not at rock bottom yet, you can still lift yourself up if you have a why. And if you are at rock bottom now, you know there is still hope out there. You can get back up. 
and uh, you know, make it through to the next step to, to whatever you want to have your life be. Um, and I love the fact that uh, Joni here said, you know, you have to write it down. You have to have goals. You have to have, um, you know, the forward projection too. Uh, so that, that's very important. So find your why and find um, what, what's your ambition? Like, what are you going after? You know, who do you want to be remembered as? Um, what do you want to give back? And, uh, you know, just keep doing it. Just keep doing it. Forget all the people that, that don't like what you're doing. Forget all the people that can't see your vision because it doesn't matter. You'll, you'll find the people. Like uh, Joni said, she went on a yacht. You know, she met some amazing people. <laughs> She's been to two TEDx's. Uh, any other events that, that was really memorable for you? Oh, you know, it, it's uh, as you're saying all this, I'm thinking, like, I never liked to travel. Like, I was in my comfort zone. And I never liked to leave the house. I always wanted to be with my kids. So being this entrepreneur and doing all this traveling and getting out of my comfort zone has been the best experience ever. I love that. And I can't wait to, I can't wait to do more because I was the one who did not travel. I, I didn't. Yeah. I mean, and there's, a, there's plenty of people out there that, you know, they grew up in a town and they're just happy. They're just happy staying in their town, but they want more. You could, you, you know, just from the way, um, you know, I, I, I get a lot of people that comment to me in private and, uh, you know, basically just like, this is what's going on. This is how I'm feeling. And I'm like, you have to get out of that comfort zone. You have, I know it's going to be hard. You might lose a lot, but you're never going to be happy if you're, you know, you just stay in that comfort zone because that's what you're already, that's what you programmed yourself. Basically you're programmed yourself on this, this path. And it's not until you break free of that and then like the whole world opens up. You're like, oh my God, I'm so much more confident. I'm so much more like knowledgeable than I thought I was, you know, because, you know, then you start meeting new people and then they start coming to you for certain things. And at least that's how I see it. I mean, that's that's how it happened to me. And that's so true. You're right. Everything you're saying is, you you hit it on now because that's how I felt. And like even going, like my first time going away by myself because I've been with my husband 20 years and I lived in my comfort zone. I mean, crazy. It's very similar to me. Yeah. So, cause I, I was married. I I was in a long-term relationship 20 years, married like 15 of those 20. And, um, you know, on, I've always had either, you know, I I traveled with um, him or we traveled as a family or I traveled just with my kids, but never by myself, you know, it it wasn't until I did that where I was like, I could really do this. Like, this is, why was I making it such a big deal? (laughs) Exactly. And you know, because I don't like being by myself. And when I travel by myself and I'm in this hotel by myself I called my husband yeah. oh my gosh I'm by myself I can't believe I'm doing this but I was actually proud of myself because you're yeah. stepping out of your comfort zone and it's and, so and bizarre too to feel that it way. is but you feel free scared too. you're like oh my god am I doing it right am I gonna forget something I'm like, like what, what am I doing did I forget something and then I'm like no my kids are home safe okay um do I need to do anything no I just need to take care of myself okay <laughs> And, and you know what? I can't wait to do it again. I love to travel now. I love to network. I love to meet beautiful people like yourself. And it's just, it's just a great experience. It really it is. is. It is. So that's exciting. So um, I guess uh, we're going to be wrapping up here soon. So uh, is there any like final message that you'd like to tell everybody? Well, you know what there is being in your entrepreneur journey. One, I had a partner for almost a, a little over a year. And the message is, I didn't believe in myself that I could do this journey by myself. So when someone approached me and said, you know, I can help you with this and that, I I was over ecstatic that someone believed in me. And I took that person on as a partner. We were like brother and sister. But, you know, we grew apart and it didn't work out. And and that's another struggle. It's like going through a divorce, like a business divorce. And but I overcame that and, and I did it. But. If you're, you're in a business and you want a partner, I would suggest working with that partner for six months before you sign any paperwork because it becomes a nightmare. And, and, and I was devastated for a couple of weeks until, you know, I, I said, I have to do something. I have to fight for my, my business that I grew for seven years. And it's nothing against anyone or the partner. They're great people, but it's, it's, it's you grow. 
So you have to remember in your business, you're growing every day. So be careful of the decision you make. I did it on impulse because someone believed in me, but you know what? I need to believe in me and I can do this business by myself. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I, I totally, I definitely relate to that. Yeah. Cause it feels good when somebody like acknowledges you, but like you said, sometimes we make hasty decisions and it's probably not for the best, you know, <laughs> looking, especially in hindsight, when something does arise that um, there's a conflict. So. Exactly. And, and through the struggles, Hey, I, I laid in bed for weeks. I mean, that's normal and don't feel guilty about doing that because you know, you have to get through that depression or whatever you're going through let it let it take its course there's nothing you can do to get out but you have to let it take its course because you know what you're going to come better on the other side so it's it's okay to feel that way once in a while because you'll you'll get over that hump that's true yeah i like that you actually put that in because um i i can't remember the lady we talked to last week but um we kind of touched on that where she's less like you know sometimes i had to lay down and just let it go go through me and stuff and i'm like i could totally relate to that i was like maybe not many people can relate to that but there are times that i'm just like i am so overwhelmed i am so stressed out or even like uh, like somebody like hates on you for whatever reason they get you know they just like question everything you're doing and they can be a total stranger and mm -hmm. it's like where did this person come from and why are they hating on me you know <laughs> so and you know but it wears you down because i'm sensitive too i'm very um sensitive and so um, and so, you know, sometimes it just takes the, like, the gusto out of it, right? And you're just like, I'm done for the day. I'm just so upset, you know? And then you just lay down and, and then you can't get break free of it sometimes. I mean, with all the motivation, with all, like, the people backing you, with all the good reviews, you're just like, but this one person. <laughs> exactly but it's okay to do that and, and 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 i and when i talk to friends and they say you know how do you do it this not i said you don't think i don't lay down and cry you don't think i get in bed and think oh my gosh can i can i carry on can i yeah. can i do this i mean we all doubt ourselves at one point but you know what you let it take its course and then you get up and then it actually it's better that you go through that because it makes you stronger it does. you get up and you fight and it makes you stronger it does and then it gets easier too because then the next one is not going to hurt as bad and then the mm -hmm. next one and um i think grant cardone actually says this too you know where um people don't if you're not getting like haters and I, I think Ray Higgins does too, network marketer guy that I know. Um, you know, they basically like, if you're not getting haters, you're not, nobody knows you. You know, the more you want the haters. And so like, exactly. go seek out your haters, you know, <laughs> keep, keep networking, keep telling everybody what you do. And you want those haters because not only yeah. they're going to like level you up, but you're going to feel good when you like reach that, you know, that success rate, reach whatever they are hating you on, you know? Exactly. Just but, like that article from the UK and saying how stupid or, or how stupid is breast deodorant. And I was hurt by that. Yeah. But, but it turned around to a positive because now I'm shipping to the UK because yeah, of that because of it. You're like, yes, <laughs> thank you for that. Yeah. So now I, I ship to the UK because of that article putting down breast deodorant and now I made more sales because of that. Yeah. I like so that. yeah, haters could be a good thing. So don't okay. look at it as a negative thing. Look at it as a positive, positive thing. thing. You're doing something right. Yeah, thank you, Joni. It's been a lovely uh, conversation here. We learned quite a bit uh, about your kids and their struggle and you know how you, um, kept going and you're keep going and you're doing all these amazing products for people that you know are very overlooked um and then also you know helping other families too and giving back and so they don't have to do um go through that period um like you had to like all of a sudden like thrown into everything by helping mm -hmm. them um you know, cover a month's worth of rent. So I, I'd be really excited to see uh, how that goes in the future. So definitely stay in touch. So, oh, absolutely. Yeah, so I'll see you uh, later. Um, you guys are actually listening to uh, Message of Hope, and this is a Stories from Struggle to Success. And today we talked to uh, Joni DeCampi. Is that right? Yeah, Joni. Right. Joni DeCampi, and um, she shared uh, her amazing story with us here on uh, One Up, a podcast, as well as Amina.media. To get the link to the podcast, to um, all 
eight broadcasts, you can uh, go to anchor.fm slash one up. And that's spelled out. That's anchor.fm slash one up. Thank you guys for tuning in the live. I see um, we've had an ongoing role here. So thank you so much for tuning in uh, for the behind the scenes. Make sure you do subscribe to the YouTube channel by going to amina.media to see um, uh, both of us on screen. So that's how you're going to see the whole um, video and you can also share it. You have to share the message. The more people that share this message, the more people that it needs to get to will receive the message. So thank you again, Joni, and I'll talk to you thank later. You. Take thank care. You. Bye. Bye-bye.